you are watching another episode of the Broken Controller Club. My name is Ed and I'm your host. Make sure you don't miss all the sweet reviews and special features and hit the subscribe button. It'll be quick and painless, I promise. So before I start this review, I need you all to know just how much I love otters. They're usually the first things I go to see at the zoo. I have pictures of them on my desktop instead of my family. I've drawn animated and voiced cartoons of them. So with all that said, I was excited to see an otter game get released on the Switch, even though I was afraid of how it would turn out, and I honestly want every game I play to be great. I also want you to know that this game randomly deleted my save data when I played through it all and unlocked all the characters, forcing me to start over from scratch. So I am quite done playing this game. Otterman Empire is a third person, I guess I'll call it a shooter, even though you rarely have to use a gun set in some world where the evil cyborg otter named Tico has decided to declare war on the Otterman Empire and the rest of the otters are there to stop him. No idea why. The game has eight levels separated into three sub-levels each and you need to get one to three stars in each of those before being able to advance to the next level. Each sub-level is introduced with a simple diagram of what you're supposed to do. It's a little like those blueprints Wile E. Coyote would have at the beginning of the cartoons, showing how he'd get the Roadrunner. The trailer is a little deceiving, because with all the jetpacking around and shooting that they show off, you think you're going to play something that has a lot of shooting in it, like Plants vs. Zombies, or something crazy like Screen Cheat. But the sad fact is, you're going to spend most of your time doing things like dunking bombs into hoops, dodging through hoops, standing next to robots so that they'll somehow charge up and then disappear unexpectedly, and a few other really just boring things to do. You'll also basically encounter the same three enemies in each level. There's flying robots that shoot you with a laser that slows you down but doesn't damage you for some reason, some gun turrets that don't notice you until you attack them or get within a couple feet of them, and also these rolling tanks that are on a set path and reminded me of crappier versions of the tanks in Tron or Vindicators. Getting killed means you wait three seconds and respawn. Also there's little music, and there's no voices or grunts or ottery squeak noises or anything. Look those up, they're really cute. The only voice is from Tico who does the same evil laugh, and that's pretty much it. So as you progress, you get more characters and gear unlocked. It's all cosmetic gear, like little hats and alternate outfits, things like that. You'll unlock more otters, a turtle, a crocodile that looks a little bit too much like King K. Rule, and this one really frightening otter that looks like he was in jail for like 10 years and did nothing but lift weights and dream about getting even with the guy who put him there. They have different weapons and special abilities, but again, it just doesn't matter when you rarely have to shoot anything. See, the levels are on such a short timer that you're going to spend all your time dodging and dashing towards whatever your objective is, otherwise you won't get the three stars you need to unlock the next major area. The game's star requirements for each major area are going to eventually require you to get three stars in almost every level, and I promise that this is so boring and somehow also frustrating that you won't want to play a level more than once. Almost every time I got three stars in a level, I was happy I'd never have to play it again. Also, in the event that you get all three stars early on in a level, you don't really win. The level doesn't end. So if you have more time on the clock, you basically just sit there and wait for it to run down and finish since there's no incentive to keep trying to score after that. This is not satisfying. The game also comes with local multiplayer with up to four players. Honestly, it's the only thing that has the potential to be any fun in this game, and it's because multiplayer is usually as fun as the friends you're playing with. Or enemies. Some of you hate your friends, and that's a valid lifestyle choice. Anyway, this is the closest you'll get to a deathmatch. Basically, it's your choice of either a free-for-all deathmatch, or you can do the oh-so-fun objectives from campaign mode. No modifiers, either. The whole thing is pretty bare-bones. The controls are a little too sensitive as well. You'll use your jetpack a lot, and simply holding down the B button will send them shooting into the sky, completely overshooting your destination. The dodge mechanic also sends you flying forward almost uncontrollably, and at times it's almost the length of the entire level that you can go, further negating the use of your guns because anything that was chasing you will have a long way to catch up, and you'll be long gone again by then. One big problem I had with the controls is that you can't aim either. Most third-person shooters now will let you hit the shoulder button or trigger button to go ahead and aim your weapon, and with this game, your only way to aim is to just use the right analog, and that's it. It was really disappointing. So after all of that that I just said, do I like anything about the game? Um, it had otters in it. I thought the otters were decently designed and animated. 
the game has a good foundation, the developers just needed to take advantage of the shooting part and at least do like a team deathmatch or something that would be fun for local multiplayer and even against the computer. It's something to give players a break from the objective-based timed games. Ultimately, this is a game I just wanted better from. Better controls, better variety in modes and game types, not, you know, deleting all my after I play through the whole thing. The lack of sounds or emotions from the characters, along with the lack of anything that makes each level feel alive, makes the game feel really empty and lifeless, too. Needless to say, I did not get my money's worth out of this title, and at 25 bucks at launch, it feels like a stretch to say it's worth picking it up even at half price when it inevitably goes on sale. Once again, I hate giving this review because I really want anything with otters to be really great. And that's it for today's review. Thanks for watching and for your support, and please do me a solid and subscribe for more content. Until next time. Congratulations! You're one of an elite few to make it to the end of the video. Reward yourself by hitting the round subscribe button in the middle, and then check out the other goodies I've got in the links next to it.